John can can see that. And um, I was expecting just a sort of group of people from Dorset. So um, some of these slides are very sort of Dorset related, um, but I'll try and explain as we go along. And I'm not sure how I got talked into doing this because I'm not a photographer, I'm not a cartographer or a 3D animator or anything like that. But I have dabbled for several years in a better attempt to try and visualize the seabed in my own mind. So, so this short presentation is not about 3D photogrammetry. I'll leave that to the people. It's about using existing tools and data, and particularly the tools that are increasingly more available and, and getting better, and using those to sort of make the pictures that are in our own minds accessible, unleash our imagination and try and understand the seabed a little bit better. So I'm going to start with um, Google Earth because it's very, very similar, or very, very familiar, sorry. Um, and I'll see if I can explain what I mean by Google Earth, which is my own sort of interpretation of what I'm trying to do with some of the sort of 3D and other images. So people familiar with Dorset will recognize this part of Dorset's coastline showing Warbur Bay on the left, St Albans and Kimmeridge um, in the middle. If you don't know Dorset, then you're just gonna to have to sort of bring up somewhere you do know with Google Earth later and, and try this. But for those who do know this coast, you can look at this image and in your mind, you can visual, visibly visualize it in phenomenal detail. For me, if I close my eyes, I can see the slipway at Kimmeridge. I can see the road, the pillbox at part of the hill, the gate that's closed if I get there before eight o'clock. I can even know where the rocks are and I can see the bumps and so forth they have to avoid when launching the rib. I find it particularly fascinating that all that comes instantly into my mind when I see this photograph because I've never seen this view. I'm not an airline pilot, I'm not an astronaut, so I've never seen the coast like this. It's just a sort of artificial image that's on my computer that can bring all this amount of imagination into my mind. You can try this with your, your own home. Um, and again, I, I picked this slide because of the Dorset connection, uh, but this is the Baker's Arms pub on the roundabout where we've met for the last couple of years. And if you were there over the last couple of years, even though you may not remember the presentations, shame, you will remember something of the pub. You know, maybe you remember the outside, maybe you remember the room we're in, maybe you remember what you could eat. But the detail that you have in your mind is phenomenal. And if you do this with your own home, it comes up very, very quickly and instantly as soon as you see the picture. But it doesn't just stop there. I've only ever driven along the roads around this pub and been in the pub. But I know what trees are, I know what fields look like, and I know what houses look like. And therefore I can visualize all the area around this pub when I haven't actually been in some of these places. And that's the concept that I've been trying to look for when I talk about Gurgle Earth. It's, is there an image that I can bring up that brings all that back to, in my mind, the diving that we've been doing? And instantly getting an impression of somewhere that I haven't been. It works with Google Earth, so why can't we make it work underwater? Um, just a little bit of an aside, uh, this is not about 3D photogrammetry, I said that, and Google Earth is not 3D photogrammetry, it's a satellite image. Um, if you zoom in on Google Earth, you end up it cheats and it switches to pictures, and this is the um, Baker's Arms again. Um, if it really was 3D photogrammetry, you'd be able to sort of zoom in, we'd be able to look at the roof tiles on their extension, we'd be able to find the cracked one, and we'd be able to measure it with enough precision that we could go away and buy a new one without actually having to climb up on the roof and do that. If you really want to know what can be done with 3D photogrammetry underwater, then I recommend, I recommend you Google Simon Brown's website, uh, Deep 3D, and you look for uh, this Thistlegorn project where he's basically done a 3D model 
of the whole of the thistle gorm. It's something like seven acre site and it's down into millimeter precision. It's absolutely mind blowing. And that is possible. There's one caveat that I would put on um, in terms of 3D photogrammetry, and that is it hates weed and anything that moves in fact. So if I was to try and use it on Kimbridge ledges, um, I don't think I'd get very far in the areas that have got the weed on. So I've been trying to understand how this works, but it doesn't always work. When I look at this image, um, it doesn't really trigger anything in my mind. And it's the same scale as the first one with the coast on. If you live there, maybe it does, but again, it's Dorset. And even when I know that the roundabout that's down in the right-hand corner is the same Baker's Arms roundabout we had in the two slides ago, it doesn't bring that same imagery back to my mind. And I can't say I fully understand it, but it's about scale, recognizable features, and the perspective against what, which we see things. So, what I'm going to try and do is transpose some of that into my concept of Google Earth. Um, and we're lucky in Dorset because we've got Doris, which is this multi-beam size scan survey. And um, just so everyone's aware, this, was, this is created with the Doris data, uh, but it's my own color rendering. So if you don't like the color rendering, um, I don't really care because I do. Um, and I do change it depending on what the project uh, is and what suits me. What I hadn't realized until a couple of years ago in a discussion with Peter was that the data is actually available on the internet and you can download uh, the data from that Doris survey. You can then load it into whatever software you choose. You can reprocess it, twist it, turn it, um, really do what you want with it. Previously, I've been using data from the GPS and the sounder on the rib. And basically, this has completely transposed my view. And, and I basically just use a Doris data now. So this is not about technical computing or software issues. But I know someone's going to ask me, what software did I use to do this? Um, well, what I will say is there's lots of software packages now that will um, handle this data. Some of them are free. Some of them you pay for. Uh, I use uh, Quantum GIS or QGIS quite a lot um, and do a lot of the uh, overlays, etc. in that. Um, but I also use something called Surfer from a company called Golden Software. That does cost, and if you're starting from scratch, I think today it's about a $1,000. Um, ironically, it doesn't actually do as much as QGIS, but it is sort of easier, quicker, and produces a better result, I think, in, in some cases. So I, I use that predominantly for the, the color rendering and, and 3D work that we're going to see. Um, so let's get back to this chart. It looks very, very pretty, but it gives me a complete imagination failure when I think about the dives I've done. And I've done quite a lot along this bit of coastline. It doesn't inspire my imagination to see what I saw when I went diving. It doesn't trigger those memory banks. If I want to analyze anything or where I've been, it takes me quite a lot of work and I've got to do it in, in quite a bit of detail. It doesn't give me that quick image that I was getting with Google. In fact, if anything, it actually detracts from it. When I see this, the detail on here draws me away from what I saw before when I looked at the coastline. So it looks great, but it's not actually achieving my concept of, of Google Earth. So um, again, some people might not know, but um, Myself and Sheila are the people behind the Undulate Ray project, which you can Google separately if you don't know about that. So, but if anyone thought they was going to get away with the presentation from us without a, an Undulate Ray in it, think again. Um, what I'm going to try and do in the next few minutes is, is explain um, more behind you know, what I've just been talking about, the, Go the Google Earth concept. Um, and since I've started diving, which is many years ago, I've always wanted to know what lies in the gloom. So just beyond our range of vision. 
Um, it's a nuisance for anybody who dives with me because I'm likely to sort of swim off in any direction at any time. And, and what I want to do is I'll swim across to the reef, look over the reef, see what's behind it, see how far it goes, see how, how far along it goes. What I'm going to attempt to do uh, with this picture is sort of fill in some of that detail for you, even though you haven't been there. And that, that makes it quite difficult because it's very clear in my mind, it's all my memory. Um, but I think, you know, we'll have a lot of divers on the, um, the call. You'll know what um, shale and sandy bottoms look like with bits of red weed. You'll know what um, rocky reef looks like with red weed on it. So I think I, am, I can get you to sort of fill in some of that and understand more about the environment that this, um, this writ, this, uh, sorry, um, undulate ray is, is there and what it may be doing in that environment. But first I want to talk about scale because I think this is very important. And I put this picture up. Um, it's not about scale bars. Uh, that, they're fine, they're essential in some places, but you really have to think about them. And this is about trying to trigger something in our memory that we don't think about. Um, so we need to train our automatic scale bar that's somewhere in our head. Hopefully everybody has a rough feel for how big a Land Rover and a, and a trailer is like this. If you've got to lug your kit around it, it's, um, it's quite a long way around. If you're a tiny topsy top shell like this one, um, it's hell of a long way across, it's huge. Um, but in fact, a Land Rover and a trailer like that, um, a lot of sea surface dives, a lot of sea surface dives don't travel much further than the footprint of that. You don't get many Land Rovers and, and ribs, cover, you wouldn't take many Land Rovers and ribs to cover an area that's um, being looked at from a, a normal sort of sea surface dive. So it's quite convenient in terms of size to sort of keep that in mind when we start to consider some of the other imagery and, and some of the data that we have, that this is a sort of size that we're, we're interested in. And if we look at this, if we go back to the coast now, so this is again Kimridge, it's looking west along Gad Cliff, and that rib is there up in that top left hand corner with the circle around it now. It's tiny. And this is part of the problem is that the seabed that we're looking at and the areas that we're looking at are actually huge. When we're looking at charts, contours, Doris overlays, we're looking at scales where we'd only recognize sort of fields, motorways, absolutely enormous buildings. And something the size of a rib or a Land Rover just gets, dis just gets lost in, in the sort of the background. You don't see it. So when we look at this, everything represented a massive geological landscape features. And we never see any of that to any extent underwater because we don't have the visibility. So there's no reference that's small enough to be Tiny Topsy's home. And therefore we can't really connect this imagery, or I can't, with what I see underwater. We're just seeing geological fault lines, significant height changes, but it's got little relation to the actual dives that I do and the areas that I'll swim across during a dive. It's too broad to connect to the sort of underworld, underwater world that I know. So the obvious thing we have to do is zoom in and zoom in again. And, um, and this is part of Kimbridge Ledges in Dorset. The area we started diving in 2020, we've got a series of sounder targets on there we've looked at, trying to understand more about this area and how the wildlife might, might use it. And I'm going to talk about um, point two, which is got that red box around it and then enlarged in the, the lower left. And I'm going to try and give you a much better perspective of maybe what that area is like. It's shallow, it's only about six or eight meters, so there's lots of weed, lots of kelp, and, and, um, and reefs and things. Once you've seen this, and once we've been through this example, I'll go back to that ray we were looking at and see if we can do the same thing with the ray. 
Um, and, and at this point, I've got to say, both Lynn and I have a huge advantage because we were on this dive and, um, and you weren't. But we'll see how we get on. Firstly, it's a big area. If you look at Google Earth at the top and the size of that red square, you can see it's the size of a very large field. These are big, big fields. The colored lines that are on the inset in the bottom, those are our dive tracks and we've done three dives on there. Um, and the entry point for those dives was not actually chosen off Doris, it was chosen off the sonar that when we ran over it. Because we got more detail on that, and you can see the gully that we um, we were diving. You can see some weed on the top of the gully and in the areas around it. And that gives us a sort of slightly better view of where we dive in, but it's still not triggering that imagination and allowing me to see uh, what I saw on that dive. But so far, this is all 2D. We've represented depth by a change of color, and we can relate to that because our human mind is beyond computer clever, but it's not as intuitive as real height. And if we go to a 3D image, uh, we'll see that because effectively here, we've degraded our data by about 30% by only showing the two. So if we zoom in a little bit more, we turn into a 3D image, we retain the dive track overlays as the colored lines. I think we get a different perspective. We can see the distinctive gully. We can see where we went on the dive. We know we're looking at an area that's the size of a large field to get it in perspective. You remember the Land Rover, it had just about drop into this gully, probably never get out again. And with a couple of photos stuck on there, we can see what some of the terrain looks like with the kelp and the weed and the, and the bottom of the gully. And that allows my mind, at least, to sort of extrapolate some of that across this area. And I get a much better view of what the, the whole area is. And um, also gives me a great urge to go back and fill in some of the bits I see around here that don't quite fit in with, with what I saw. And this process doesn't really rely on any new data. This is all existing data. Uh, Doris has been around for over 10 years now. Um, the tools that I'm using have probably been around for two or three years, and, but they're getting better and better all the time. And when I've shown these sort of charts to people that I've dived with, it also seems to give them a much better context or perspective to understand where they've dived. And I guess I must have shown one or two too many to Lynn, and that's how I got talked into doing this. So let's go back to our Ray. He's still there in the photo, and actually he's probably still close to that same spot. From our experience, they come back to the same area or they stay in the same area and, and return um, quite often to the exact same spot periodically over years and several years. Photo is taken just outside Kimbridge Bay. I'm going to see if I can now sort of fill in a perspective of the area that he was in um, that will mean something to you as well as me. So we're just outside Kimmeridge Bay. Again, apologies to people who are not in Dorset. Um, on the cliff in the top right is um, Kimmeridge Tower, an old folly. Um, and I can see that in my mind so well because I've been there and walked around it. We had some data uh, sent to us that suggested that there may be um, a ray resting site just outside uh, Kimbridge Bay and we knew there were rays in the area we get them in the bay and we get them all along the ledges we picked the exact spot again on the sounder unfortunately on this one I didn't keep the trace um, but it's about here just at the head of that sort of flat looking section in the middle of the, the, the image first of all that flat section is again quite big you can put a lot of those Kimbridge towers in there you could park lots and lots of Land Rovers and trailers across that flat area. And the ray was parked on the edge of that, just by the reef that we saw in the background of the photo. Can't share my memory, but just from the photo, um, you can see the flat bottom with a broken shale, and you can see the bits of weed surrounded by a rocky reef and a lot more red weed on the, on the surrounding.
So if we use the same Doris data now and we take that and we put it into a 3D view, we've still got the overlay of the dive tracks. I swam around quite a bit, so I, I know quite a bit about it, but I'm assuming that lots of people on this call, um, again, will remember, will know what rocky reef with red weed on is like and what shady bottom is like. And, um, and I can link my dive experience with that area and I can start to sort of get a much broader picture of what that area looks like. And I can link our experience with undulate rays and actually sort of start to begin to understand that they may be using this area. It also tells me where to go next time I go diving because there's some things I then see on here and go, I wonder if that's exactly the same or whether it's different. And of course, with the right software, you can zoom in, zoom out, spin this round, do what you really want with it to get the best perspective. I pick views for this presentation that work for me, but there's lots of scope for sort of moving around and, and trying different variations. Um, and I actually think what we're looking at now as we go around on this is an area that's a perfect resting place um, for rays during the day. And um, actually, if anybody wants to dive this site, we have a PDF which has all the exact details on. Um, so you, you need to find your own way there, but you can dive it. And we love to get photographs of the rays that sort of live on this, this site. And for me, I get a much, much better view of the area around that ray. And, and I hope you do just from that brief description. But just to... Um, end on a completely different project linked to what Matt I think is going to talk about later um, I had reason to go back and look at this book this is Dive Dorset and it's an old version it's 19 mid 1980s version it's not the the one that was updated at the end of the 80s and the early 90s and, and under Kimmeridge I came across this statement which describes the seabed black flat shale and, and broken ledges but then he's got a statement team that says, this is skate ground. And when I saw that, uh, we already started investigating the site we just looked at. It did make me think that all we're actually really doing with all this technology is, is shortcutting um, our local knowledge or other people's local knowledge. So back to where we started, um, Google Earth, it's, my concept of being able to instantly recall what you saw in, in a sort of three-dimensional sense, I think it's already here. I think it's in our heads and we just haven't found all that focus controls to, to bring it up and, and call it up at instance notice like we can with Google Earth. So hopefully uh, this has um, triggered something in your imagination and, um, and I'll leave it then to everyone else to uh, take it forward from here and See what the